Coca, su naray, su naray en ti. 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 Hello, hi, welcome to this new episode of the Mango TV podcast. Today we have Flor Bollini. Named the corporate chairman by Forbes magazine, Flor has over a decade of experience as one of the pioneering practitioners of the plant medicine world. She has developed and introduced an expert system that has set the standard for the administration and integration of 5-MeO-DMT, the most potent psychoactive compound in the world. She's now building NANA, the world's first comprehensive integrative therapy solution for mental health and wellness. It's an expert system that combines technology, counseling, and lifestyle modification to scale and standardize the preparation, administration, and integration of any psychoactive medicine. That seems so interesting. Welcome. Thank you. So, um, Flora and I met a long time at the London screening of Neurons on Nirvana. Which year was that? That was like uh, 2010. Something like that. Maybe. 13 years ago. So um, today we're going to speak, as usual, 45, 60 minutes. I'd love to cover four chapters of your life. So, of course, I'm interested on your personal journey, how you got in contact with this compound. Then I'd love to talk more specifically about 5-MeO, which you had practiced for a long time. And then I'd love to talk about your new venture, NANA, and the difference with the standard medicalization of psychedelics that everybody's talking about these days. So let's jump in with your personal journey. How did you discover this compound? So, so I'm Argentinian. My mom is a Freudian psychologist. So I grew up very stimulated, but with no faith. I went straight into politics. And at the age of 25, I needed to run for member of parliament to keep on growing in my career. But I didn't think that that's how I was going to give my contribution to the world. So I packed my bags and I moved to Berlin. In Berlin, I changed school of psychology. I went from Freudian to Jungian. How how old were you when you went to Berlin? 25. And it was within the context of Jungian psychology that, that I basically, my therapist suggested why I didn't try ayahuasca. So I got, after a couple of years of research, I finally did, and it radically changed the course of my life. Not only I understood that I was in my mind, it also put me in this passionate search of ancestral way of healing before the Western world. So as I was doing my entrepreneurial things here and there to make a living, I started diving into Ayurveda. I moved to India, you know, uh, exploring not only meditation and yoga, but tantra and and also like uh, Africanism within the shamanism, all within the context of Western psychology. And intuitively, I started weaving these practices together around my personal experiences at at this time, mainly with ayahuasca. And I started to see that all these practices intertwine really nicely to integrate these experiences. And so for for many years, you know, I was sitting with the medicine as much as I could. And I started asking the medicine to show me which was my path, why I was so much, what I was supposed to do with so much energy I had, what I was so lucky, you know, always landing like a cat, meeting everyone, you know, that was kind of influential in every town I will, I will, I will land. And, and so the medicine ayahuasca started encouraging me that I had to step up to show my way, the feminine way, the empathic way, how I would like to be served. And for context, shamanism can be very misogynist and masculine in its ways, working with heroic doses that most people cannot conduct, especially women, right? And so I procrastinated as much as I could. I didn't think this was my path. 15 years ago, it wasn't what it is today. People hardly even know what ayahuasca was. Uh, Until in one of the ceremonies, she goes, and now that an Argentinian politician with a background in chemistry became the Pope, Francis I, which excuse you have not to do your work? 
Nice. So kind of that was the unbeatable argument for me to step up. So since 2013, when Jorge Bergoglio became Francis I, I opened my private practice. I stepped up to serve five MEO DMT, following the guidance of ayahuasca. But so, so, so tell our listener what is Favemio and how did you go from ayahuasca to Favemio? So I asked her what's after you and she was like Favemio DMT. The uh-huh. God molecule is the most potent psychoactive compound. It's uh, within the tryptamine family. So it's a cousin molecule of DMT that is the active component of ayahuasca. It's four times stronger and it takes you to a very different place. DMT. It's, it's, a, it's the poison of the toad. It can be extracted from the poison of the toad. You can also find it from seeds from yopo. So there are like different ways in you can get it, also from the plant world. But the one that I actually use as the source of the medicine was, yes, the toad. So you rem- I remember once you told me that you would go to the Sonora Desert yes. looking for a toad, scare him with a piece of glass and then let them dry and then scratch the the piece of uh, solidified venom, and then people would inhale through a pipe. Yes, you freebase it, and it's like antimatter. Mm -hmm. It's basically the highest frequency of vibration that it doesn't exist on this plane, and it only is created for this short period of time when you freebase it, and so that smoke is like antimatter, the highest form of love that you inhale. And so basically you smoke yourself into enlightenment. You experience like the big bang inside your head. Yes. It's the only compound that can fully dissolve the ego. Yes. So you experience the ego death in a full dose that is basically checking out, going and becoming one with everything there is, experiencing singularity, and then coming back into yeah, this plane. Yeah. I, can, I can confirm because <laughs> I had a, a big dose with, with some friends after f- several days that we were together, so I felt really supported and so I went full on and it was like a typical mystical experience of one of us said it's like touching the heart of God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you feel this um, like heaven, the way you imagine heaven, this unbounded sense of love and compassion and you know, I couldn't speak for six hours after that. Yes. It was beautiful. Yeah. And, and actually in Ibiza a few days ago, the ex-wife of a friend had a very serious infection and ended up having a quadruple amp- amputation on a septic shock. And now she was there with prothesis on the feet and the hand and she looks beautiful. And she was telling that uh, she had a full on, she went to the light. She was already on the other side. It was all white. And I thought she was describing a Favemio experience. And then the kids call her back. And she went back, uh, have a goosebump. Wow. So, okay, but so how did you find this molecule? When Ayahuasca said, okay, now your path is to serve this molecule, how did you find it? Or the- I looked for like five years. I looked for five years. I looked for five years within all the leads that I had. There was no commercialization of, of the substance at that time. I could only find it synthetic. So I wanted the natural. And... In one, of, um, in one of my ayahuasca ceremonies, I was on my way to India and she told me, don't go to India, you're going to India following your mind. If you want to follow your heart, go to Mexico. And I was like, what am I going to do in Mexico? And so I carry on with my plan to go to India and I stopped in New York for connection and, and then I got stranded in New York because of the hurricane and in that time, I met this man who I called Hurricane, and he's like, I'm going to Mexico. Why don't you come with me? And so it resembled, I'm like, maybe this is a sign I should re- go to Mexico. And so when I follow him to Mexico, I finally met Juan Jorge Garcia Mendez, Coque, that is this Mexican healer. He does it not for a living, but basically um, we fall in love and I move with him for an year. And so during that year, I basically observe how he was serving 5MEO as a way of helping people, you know, not professionally, just out of sharing his gift. He used to heal with water as well and he had very innovative protocols. 
And I still had no real idea that this would have any impl- application in my life, right? But I was just sharing life with him and, and seeing how a very sophisticated man could share this medicine with the people he loved. And so after spending a year with him in there, when we, when we separated, I took him to Burning Man. And, and so from there, he kind of retired of serving medicine and passed me the torch. He was like, I've, I, I, I did my fair shares sharing the medicine with everyone I love. It takes a toll after a while, right? There's a big energy purge every time you serve. So there are like so many people that you can do in a way. And so since then is that I actually um, contact Octavio Retti and invite him to Ibiza, who was at that time the main practitioner in the world or the loudest, let's say, speaking at TED Talks and so forth. And, and when I saw him give ceremony in Ibiza to, to my community, I got sick. I literally puked. Because he was overdosing people in a brutal way, in such a brutal way, that I was totally shocked compared to what I've seen with Coque, right, with Juan Jorge, a sophisticated man, very empathic, and then seeing someone that had megalomaniac characteristics, serving with no empathy, with no compassion. Yeah, that to his defense, he was really focusing on uh, last stage opiate addict that might have need the breakthrough dose. Right, but it was a standard dose for everyone. And so I had friends that were not heroin addicts that were served that bomb without even measuring if you were putting 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams in a pipe, blocking in the nose, like really, you know, waking up with water. So things that for my energy system was kind of a shock. And so it was in, after that experience of seeing 20 people go through that, that, uh, that I sat again with ayahuasca and I said, okay, let's say that I hear you, that I can definitely do something better than that. So then now uh, what? I say, I'm a shaman. And so ayahuasca was go to school, go and become a priestess of the most ancient divination system in the world and learn how to be a professional curandera. So she sent me to Ifa, Ifa Divination System from the Yoruba, Nigeria. You realize that you're describing this communication with the plant like you were talking with the person that send you all this, that give you all this advice and then end up being right. In Mexico, you find coke and then, yeah. And uh, my business plans come from her, they are not mine. Okay, tell us about Ifa then. And so, well, Ifa is kind of like the Harry Potter school. (laughs) It's where all religions come from. It's proclaimed by the UNESCO as an intangible heritage of humankind. And so basically it's a study of craft, uh, high craft. Interesting thing is that they don't take substances. They offer substances. They work with energy matrix, with deities. How do you hold space, right? How you work with ancestors, with the forces in nature. And so it became a fascinating journey. But uh, so where, where is the head office? Where did you go? <laughs> so initially I, well, the thing is when through the slaves, it went to Africa, to Cuba, Brazil mainly, and then Catholicism got a hand on it and created Santeria and all the deformations after it. So as a woman, you cannot initiate as a priestess after Catholicism put a hand on it. So I had to go to the roots. The IFA Foundation of North America was the only place in this continent that it would initiate you as a priestess. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started. But then I merged to work with actual African people, you know. And so it's it's been a journey. It's been uh, almost like uh, nine years that I'm fully initiated as a high priestess into Africanism. And in, that, in those years, you left the DMT on the side? No, 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 always in, 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 in parallel. In, in parallel. So uh, I started training as an African priestess, doing the initiations. I did four of them. And there's a lot of study materials, right, of metaphysics, really. You know, how you source energy matrix, how you open 
You know, when you open ceremony, how you can call these forces to come and take place. Mm -hmm. How do you work with, like, the wind is Oya, the fire is Shango, the ocean is Yemanya, right? Like, you see the natural forces as deities, right? And so, at the same time, I started very shy, slowly, slowly serving how I would like to be served. So knowing how scary these experiences can be, my approach was more, I will introduce you to the compound with a very small dose of five milligrams. And based on that first dose, you decide how much more you want to go. And when? Uh Uh-huh. And then we can repeat the same process if you have courage enough to go into the third dose all within the same session. So you ease yourself into rather than being punched in the face. And so the most professional doctor at that time, Dr. Martin Polanco, who was working with heroin addicts and Navy SEALs in the only legal clinic uh, in the world working with 5-MeO and Iboga combined, came, tried my technique, and he's like, wow, in this way we get way farther we weigh less medicine and without any risk of post-traumatic stress disorder. So he made this technique be applied in his clinic. And, and so since then, we started collaborating together. He was focusing on Navi seals that are the most complex cases because they tend to have kind of all conditions, right? PTSD. Tra- sometimes traumatic brain injury, depression, anxiety, addiction, over-medicated and so forth. And I went to work with big entrepreneurs, right? And and we both came to the same conclusion of what it actually takes to radically transform someone's life between three and six months. And in essence, the solution that we ran underground for over a decade were patterns, you see the patterns that repeat itself. We are not so different from one another. There are kind of five different ways that we tend to go, right? Kind of at some point, your heart gets broken, normally be- before we are six Pointy. or five. Uh, yeah. Before. Yeah, when you're a kid. Remember, like, what is the first painful memory that you have? When, 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 when maybe your parents get distracted and you take it personally. Yeah, or like in my case, I remember I was in first grade and this, they both that I would have the, the, main, the, the mean teacher. And I remember like oh, feeling this feeling of like, why, right? And so kind of we all have that first mm. crack. And then our personality builds around to protect us mm. from that. And we keep on collecting wounds yeah. in the heart. And depending our coping mechanisms, we end up, with a mental disorder, with a chronic pain, yeah. or with some clutches yeah. in our attempt to thrive, yeah, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Krishnamurti called it the constellation of trauma. It's just not the one. The one creates the blueprint to then put yourself in a position to do it again and again and again. Exactly, exactly. And so what we've seen is that weaving lifestyle practices, so your nutrition, your movement, your touch, your sexuality, with counseling that is different to psychotherapy, is holding someone's heart and empowering that person to transform their life, paired with personalized medicine, tailor-made supplementation, where the psychoactive is only 20% of the equation. It's only like the cherry on the cake that give you that first dissociative experience of I am not my mind, and then the subsequent doses give you the courage, the booster, of doing the hardest of work of changing your lifestyle. Yeah, this is very important for our listener. You know, there is so much hype around the the medicine, the compound. I meet so many chemists and and, and new pharma that has, you know, synthesized the new compound, and... And this is, of course, is important, but like Flor says, might be 20%. You know, it's like people invent a new bistury and it can be the best bistury in the world, but if the surgeon don't know how to use it, then it's not going to 
allow the rewire of the brain, that it takes a long time and it's very deep. Yeah, exactly. There, there is no magic pill yeah. and psychedelics are not it. Yeah. You have to put the work. Yeah. And so when ketamine became legal under FDA, we saw an opportunity to replace the dissociative experience we were giving with 5-MeO with ketamine. But so now we're going into the, your professional career. Right. And I mean, the more, more, the more you know, start up, the more... Overground. Just to just to finish the chapter on you know because when I met you you were you know you were known to be the the DMT shamaness that would serve this compound in a progressive way in a gentle way in a more feminine way and and, and so there was a moment when you decided to go to the next level and see how you could maybe look for investors and, and, and standardize this practice that you saw was working in something more scalable and be, be, bigger entity. Yeah, I got, um, so Trevor Nielsen became my business mentor. Yeah. Trevor is an American businessman mm-hmm. and philanthropist. He put together some of the biggest philanthropic campaigns with the biggest celebrities on, in the world. And when he met me, he retired me as amazing woman. And he said, I believe these medicines are going to go mainstream. If I were you, I would go biotech. And I want you to start thinking how you're going to scale what you learned underground for this past decade. So I went to Israel. I started doing due diligence in biotech. I realized that biotech don't try the drugs, they legalize And so this does not really apply for these type of compounds. These are different animals. And as you say, the surgeon need to know how to serve these medicines. So there's where I saw the opportunity of what I could contribute to this place. That is the companion technology to psychedelic biopharma. And that is the inception of NANA. Interesting. But why you say the the, um, biopharma was not testing the medicine, they were just they, legalizing they it. They test it, but they don't have personal experience with it. So the reason why clinical trials currently are having such a negative, a high volume of patients having negative experiences is because there is no nuances, there is no know-how of how to serve the medicine in a way that the person can have a positive experience. But those... but. That's what makes the difference between good biopharma and good trial. You know, MAPS with, the M- with MDMA has had very s- successful two trial and now is going for the third one. But the Compass com- is doing very successful trial. With well, the- but so if you see the results, so for instance, to serve MDMA is not as complex as serving 5 amino or DMT. True. And it's more predictable. And also, like, as a patient, for you to let go on 5-MeO on a hero dose up your nose, as Beckley SciTech is doing it, is hard. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? The same way that you have with Compass, is like to give you a hero dose of mushrooms with no real preparation in a clinical setting, in a room that is sterile, cold, surrounded by computers. It, it can be your worst nightmare. But, so, the, but the result has been positive overall. Because these medicines are so powerful that yeah. even served in the worst possible way, yeah. they will still show positive outcomes. Yeah. Now, 5-MeO rewires the brain, but 40%, from 40 to 66% of the patients are rewiring negatively. And that is due to the overdose that they are given because it's important to assess the person as a whole, not only biologically and psychologically, but also emotionally and spiritually. Have you ever had a mystical experience? Do you believe in God? Do you have some form of trauma, sexual trauma? All these things are important to determine what is a dose. Yes. But don't you think we should... I don't want our listener to get confused because... Basically, what we're talking about is that in order to integrate this compound in, in, in mainstream medicine, in order to turn a compound into a medicine, there is three phases, which is trial first trial, uh, phase one, phase two, phase three. It starts with, with efficacy and safety and then a large group, phase mm-hmm. three. 
So what you're saying, you're saying that, you know, once this medicine passed the trials and they get approved and then the psychedelic psychotherapist can buy them and prescribe them to the client, then that's when the real work starts because it needs this medicine, they reduce the blood supply in the default mode network, they reduce your egoic armor, and they give the opportunity to the therapist to help you rewire your brain. But it's not guaranteed. And a base, yes, and you're describing kind of the biological aspects, but to put it like more plain, it's like these medicines create the mystical experience that is at the roots of most mental disorder. Why am I here? What is this life about, right? Who am I? And so it's important to administer that mystical experience, understanding that then the person has to integrate this into their everyday. Life, So yes. to blast you into a heroic dose, to fully check out, maybe that is something that can happen in the course of some years. There is no need to eat the whole cake the first time, yeah. all in, because then how do you make sense that there was no God, then there is a God, and you are God within five minutes? Yeah. Yeah? For sure, for sure. For and sure. so the resistance of the mind to such a breakthrough, if you are not ready to receive that experience, that is when the brain rewires negatively and you have one of the most traumatic and scary experiences of your life. Yeah. But for example, Compass, for example, who's the uh, two billion valuation in uh, NASDAQ, etc. in their protocol, I think they, the dose is like two grams of psilocybin, two grams of mushroom. So what, you consider that a hero, heroic dose? I no. think the heroic dose is the five, six, seven grams. Yeah. yeah. So in, 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 in what all these psychedelic companies are offering in the protocol is one and a half plus a booster of one, something like that. So Yeah, the thing with mushroom is like the highest dose of psilocybin given in clinical settings is less effective to create the mystical experience than the smallest dose of 5-MeO given in clinical setting. And also... Mushrooms, psilocybin takes eight hours to create a less potent mystical experience than 5-MeO in 20 minutes. I see. So from many different places, it's like to sit for someone for eight hours also is not really very cost effective. Also for the patient to go through such a journey, you know, it has also a much more complexity and requires a lot, a lot more of care. So from that perspective, that's why 5-MeO is the most effective to, to create the mystical experience that is the common denominator across all compounds of why they create the healing. Yeah. That makes that, sense? Yeah, yeah, completely. That's very well said. And, and if, if you add that the mystical experience can also incorporate this sense of belonging, this sense of community. Yes. That's where I think the healing really starts. I think there's been so many research that really show that, you know, depression and anxiety, some, most of the times come from a lack of connection, which come from a lack of community. Yes. So that sense of belonging, that, we, that, that unified experience can be the beginning of a healing for sure. And that is also why, as our Series A with Nana, once we established the platform, we are getting is designing the prototype center of how to give group ceremonies with natural settings because this medicine has to be done in groups. So, for instance, ketamine, that is the first legal compound, it does require the same set and settings of group ceremony than ayahuasca. Yeah. You see people, you know, reaching for a hand in the yeah. intramuscular experiences. You you need the power of the group yeah. for integration also, right? To hear the story and the experience of the person next to you, it really sometimes helps you understand your own experience. Yeah. 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 So they are trying to make it fit within psychology. These medicines Which is one -on -one. don't fit within psychology just to start because most psychologists don't even, how are they going to deal with the psycho-spiritual integration with most therapists don't even believe in God? 
And so if you don't have personal experiences with these medicines, you cannot help anyone integrate anything. Yeah, we need to we need to educate a new generation of psychedelic psychotherapists. Yes, and also to understand that you don't need to have a degree as a psychotherapist or psychologist or psychiatrist in order to be able to help someone transform their life. That you can have, you can be a coach or a mentor. Or like the first thing is to have personal experiences with these medicines, personal experience with lifestyle practices. And so this is where NANA comes as, as the world's first protocol in the space, addressing the individual as a whole and weaving lifestyle practices, body, mind, heart, and spirit. So you start rebuilding your lifestyle based in the, in the pain that you have, that you have, you know, in your heart. So let's say if you have, if you've been sexually abused, the periphery of practices around sexuality, healing sexual trauma, sexual expression is going to be higher than if you have an eating disorder or if you have an addiction. That makes sense? And also understanding that underneath the addiction or the mental disorders, there's normally a trauma. And three out of five of people that I work with, they have a sexual trauma or a sexual addiction. So also sexual medicine should be considered a field in itself in order to deliver curative therapies when it comes to mental health. Because right now, the, te- the psychedelic therapist doesn't have necessarily a specialization. No, and there's also not even training really for a psychedelic therapist. It's like, you know, it's kind of... On the like, university level, I, no... And, and also, like, to administer ketamine, let's say, that is currently what is out Legal, of the gate, yeah. compared to administering 5-MeO DMT, we are talking about 100x in complexity, yeah. right? And so that is what our biotech play is focusing on. It's like, how can we harness the knowledge of the underground in real life experience right, with thousands of patients and then through innovative delivery mechanisms, through a secret formula, simplify the complexity for medical professionals to administer this experience and also to simplify the complexity for a patient to be able to let go and to have a positive rewiring experience. Yeah, this is so interesting. You don't want to learn in the clinical trial. When I spoke with the chief scientist officer of Atai and Compass, he told me we have big black holes when it comes to preparation and integration. We don't know if we put people back in SSRIs after we give them mushrooms. And so it's fundamental importance to be well prepared, to assess the person, to understand which type of dose they can start with. It has to be personalized medicine. It cannot be standardized, standardized. unless a standardized hero does. That makes sense? Mm-hmm. And also to understand the basic principles of set, which means the set in your mind, setting the kind of environment you're at, dosing, progressive dosing, right? And and also like navigation, how do you use your breath? What happens when fear or scary situations come? Give them a basic shamanic 101 course because you are going into this journey. The insights are revealed to you. How to set the intention so the medicine can show you what is holding yeah. you back, right? And so that's why also the role of the therapist or whomever is doing the role of integration is more about asking questions yeah. rather than analyzing yeah. you and telling you what is wrong with you. Yeah. And also who is prescribing you maybe a hero dose that is going to be an overdose, then it's not the person that has to integrate you from that overdose. Mm. So this is one of the things that Nana is aiming to cover. Yeah. Right? With, with, with how? With educational so modalities? It, it's an online solution. It's an online platform uh, with double interface 
for medical professionals and for individuals, breaking down as a roadmap the process from assessment, personalization, preparation, administration, and integration for any psychoactive Amazing. medicine. Amazing. So standardizing as much as the content as possible. Yeah. So through the, the, the kind of the user experience, like the hero's journey, you start going through the process itself to realize that you are going to self-realize, yeah, in at the speed and at the depth that you feel comfortable with. That yeah. makes sense? And, and according to the armor that you have built. Yes. And according to the access to your subconscious and according to your understanding, because, you know, the subconscious doesn't really speak English. When the subconscious starts emerging, it emerges in sensation and feelings and shape and color. You almost need a translator to, uh, to do this deep inner, inner work. So Nana works with a team of teachers and therapists that have, have experience with this compound, and it's like an educational tool. Yeah, so basically with the best in class of the underground and the overground, because we've been very few since kind of the beginning we know who we are so basically we we extracted all this process we developed it analog with the first round of money that we raised for Nana and we created the whole process analog we incorporated feedback and actually it scaled way more beautifully than I thought and so what is a big change in the current approach is that you are empowering the person to become an active agent of their transformation. You are your shaman, you heal yourself. We are here to support you meantime you do the work. And so the online process is underpinned by a community of people supporting each other, the peer-to-peer -peer support. And the subsequent doses is like not one time fix it all. No, you keep on going into having a second experience or a third experience every time you need another breath of air, right? When life starts becoming hard again, you know that this medicine has natural ones have a lasting effect more than ketamine. Ketamine is shorter, right? Within a week, you start feeling the symptoms again. With natural compounds, it's more like 30, 45 days, right? And so the protocol we propose is a progressive dosing technique in which maybe after a week or two weeks, you go again for another experience a bit deeper, if you feel like. So it's like peeling the layers of an onion, yeah. but that's who you are. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, totally. And yeah, I always say that, that the famous quote from Alan Watts that says that, you know, psychedelic you do once or twice because when you get the message you hang up the phone is a little bit misleading because it's, you know, we're, not, we're not like computers where you download an app and then you have it. This rewiring of your, this neural circuitry take times and, and the, during the effect and few days after this, you, know, you have a glimpse of what it means to be whole and feeling whole, but then you know, like a snow globe, the, the neural circuitry tend to go back to the same configuration that you had for 30, 40 years, which was your egoic armor. So what you're proposing makes total sense to me that you know, it's, 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 it's a process. And then you know, the integration is key, but also the application in your daily life, you know, how this experience translate in the way you parent, you love, your enjoy your spare time, the way you really, you know, you need to keep on rewiring your brain in your daily life, the way you eat, the way you, you, you really the way you live. And that is a, that window of opportunity, that kind of the neuroplasticity is, you know, help create new patterns. Mm. And so that's where we focus in integration. It's not only having someone helping you process the most difficult aspect of the journey, but it's basically a table of content where you start to see which lifestyle practices can I start slowly, slowly integrating into my lifestyle as part of that integration, right? And so the medicine then becomes kind of the booster that gives you that 
push, you know, that boldness to do the, the hardest of work. But the interesting thing is that then you want to exercise, you want to meditate. Then, you know, simplifying, well, these are the supplements you can start weaving. And these are maybe like we did a curation of the best in class of all the lifestyle practices around each aspect of the self. And so then, you know, people they are always nervous before these experiences. They research a lot. And so what we did is to simplify the complexity of how to live a woke life. So it doesn't take for them decades as it has taken for us. Yes. And so then with this table of resources, they can slowly, slowly start weaving into their life. And then you see that then once you started doing the supplementation and maybe eating healthier and then you are starting now with the meditation and so then when you go to your second dose then that maybe is already in and then you can start weaving something else like movement and that's why we call it transformative medicine mm. because then you achieve your dreams mm. then you need to dream new dreams and that is a very interesting thing of having worked for so long with these medicines and see where the people that you work with, where they've got, right? How they have radically transformed their life, how they are thriving, becoming leaders in their community, right? When before they couldn't even wake up from bed, right? So it's interesting to see that you not only don't qualify anymore from the condition with the same protocol that keep optimizing itself as you go into this transformative journey, you basically align with what you came here to do, yeah? And I think that that is at the core of most of the depression that happened today. It's like, why am I here? What am I supposed to do with my life, right? Yeah. And these medicines really give you the insight of what is your unique contribution to the world. And I think that that is one of the most valuable things that we have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So... Can you say that you basically offering like a psychedelic coaching, like like you know there are business coaching or life coaching. It's 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 more like a, a su support, holistic support around how to transform your life in parallel of this psychedelic psychotherapy therapeutic yes. session. Yes, yeah, for both because it's also understanding that. As a medical professional, you have to have this personal journey for yourself. And then unless you do, you shouldn't be doing this work. Yeah, which is something mandatory that is not regulated. FDA hasn't regulated on set, on setting, or dosing, yes. or any kind, right. Well, no, with ketamine, it already happened, right? It's out of the gate, the standard dose, or like the Yale protocol is six intramusculars in two weeks. That is a lot. I couldn't even process one. And I have over 300 ceremonies. So imagine someone with no background. And then they give you talk therapy. Talk therapy is also not enough to integrate a substance with the potential of abuse that ketamine has. So there's going to be a massive epidemic of addiction with ketamine. Companies are prescribing ketamine like they are candy online. And then go and do talk therapy with a therapist that is burnt out. And in average, they charge $200 per hour. It doesn't even get close to the level of care that is required for these medicines to be effective and not addictive and not traumatic. I see, I see. Yeah, I never really, for some reason in my head, I always thought as ketamine as a different kind of compound, which was more dealing with the symptom than addressing the cause. Yeah. I always thought that, you know, you have to do it every total number, number of years. So I never really thought that it would, necess you know, need a certain kind of, of training for a ketamine therapist. But, but you're right, I think, you know, it, it, it's, it's similar in the sense that you need to hold the space to integrate these states, otherwise there is the risk of addiction and, and, and going from peak experience to peak experience. So ketamine is a shortcut, it's not a quantum leap, right? The good thing that it has is that it doesn't give you the vertigo, 
is not as scary as a psychoactive can be because artificially shut your default network, your monkey mind, your ego egoic mind, and take you to that place of dissociative experience without having to have the courage that it takes to get there with the natural ones, right? The downside, I mean, the other positive side to it is that it's very clear to give you the insights of what's holding you back. It's actually way more clear than ayahuasca that can be more confusing, right? But on the downside is that it's too good to be true, right? You want to be on it all day. There is no real side effects. The following day, your mind feels way more calmer. You can actually feel the neuroplasticity. But so, unless you are using this substance to give you that first breath of air after so long and that then you can use this opportunity, this window of opportunity to start weaving lifestyle practices that then will sustain your transformation, you're going to fall on your face with an addiction. That's why it's schedule three. Yeah. So it's a medium for something. There is, it's not the end in itself. And I think that the failure of Western medicine is trying to find a prescription drug that we solve the issue. It just doesn't work that way. Because the Western health system is too reductionist with this linear, with, with this approach of, you know, finding the solution to a, to a linear solution to a pathology. You know, that's why I think that some of this, you know, the, the, the process to legalization of a certain compound has to go through the, the standard model of one specific condition, so the PTSD or the depression. And this is because the way the, uh, had the, the, the Western system is designed to get approved just for a specific condition where what we are seeing needs to be, to be addressed for anxiety and depression is, 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 is a more holistic approach to a sense of, you know, feeling you know, a sense of belonging to the community, a sense of... Purpose in life. Purpose. Right, or like uh, anxiety is fear, Divinity. right? Exactly. And also sometimes there are adaptive disorders yeah. to the reality we live today. Yeah. But so there is no pill that is going to take your depression away if you are not leaving your, your you know, your destiny. Yeah. If you yeah. are not leaving your purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. I think that the reason why there are only increasing epidemics yeah. when it comes to yeah. mental health, yeah. there is not one condition that is successfully treated. Yeah. Is because, because it's too reduction. It's like the SSRI. They don't understand how the mind works. Yeah. The mind is not at the same level than the liver and all the rest of yeah. organs. It can be yeah. compartmentalized. Yeah. But also the autoimmune system, they don't know how it works. I mean, Western medicine is still... Hasn't got a clue. That's with, why with cancer and and autoimmune and comorbid to mental health. We yeah. will see that there is a domino effect yeah. with when these medicines are well um, served, and so that's why I call it transformative medicine. Yeah. A new field of medicine has to emerge in order for these medicines to deliver cures. Yeah. The Western medicine approach is not designed to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to introduce the heart. You have to assess the person as a whole. Yeah, the mind, body, spirit. Yeah. The mind, body, spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this was very interesting. Thank you so much. But so what are you, so are you looking for investors still? Yes, so we are now raising our seed round with Nana. Yeah. And we are also now raising our first seed round as well. I mean, with Nana, we raise a pre-seed and now we are raising a seed. Yes. And with the Rewired Therapeutics, we are starting to raise a round of funding yes. to do trials on mice first and then animals. And then second phase would be for humans. Amazing. And you're also looking for therapists? To no. train? Not no, yet. In, initially with uh, Nana is content only. It's yeah. a membership subscription with double interface for individuals, medical professionals. And we want to standardize it as the first protocol in the space where everyone can plug and play. Yeah. So either if you are a practitioner or a clinician or a clinic, or if you're an individual, you can use our 
assessment, our uh, preparation and integration, regardless of where you are doing your amazing experience. And all this has been already designed? Yes. I see. Fantastic. Now we are raising the money of the seed to translate all the experience into digital. We did it analog first. And now we are trans with the money of the seed round, we translate it all into digital for the platform. And then the subsequent uh, round, the A, that is to create the first um, prototype clinic, the, like the flagship, that we will franchise that model. So then you have the licensing of the platform and the franchise of the center. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Well, you know, it's, this is very important work Thank because we're we are really just at the beginning. I agree. And, and, you know, who knows what's going to happen when, you know, MDMA is going to be the first. I mean, ketamine is already out of the gate. And according to, I haven't really looked so much into it, but according to what you're saying, they're not doing great. There's a risk of addiction. Then the next one is MDMA. And that, I think, MAPS is training yeah. the MDMA. And that's very, it's a very specific for PTSD linked to, you know, this in incredible increase in empathy. Yeah. And um, and then after that, the following one probably will be psilocybin. And so we'll see how this play out. We'll see how therapists will be able to integrate that in their, in their practice. You know, someone was saying that the, the, the transpersonal psychologist would be the best yeah, place to, 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 to use this compound. Anyhow, thank you so much. This is very important. If someone wants to invest with you, how, how do they find you? They can write to floor at nanahills.com. Yeah, we'll put it we'll put it on the on the show notes, don't worry. My mm -hmm. Instagram is Flor Bolini. My website is florbolini.com. Fantastico. And uh, so the last comment, what would you recommend if some people wants to use this compound underground because they're widely available? What recommendation do you have for people? So you know, like in AA what it actually make it so effective is the community, is the support of the community, is as you say, the belonging, the opposite of addiction is human connection, is not abstinence, right? Well so I think it's really important to understand that we can hold space for each other. Part of the Nana Play's female empowerment, what we observe is that, that a woman naturally know what to do. The maternal instinct kicks in and she, so you naturally progressive dose, you naturally don't put sexuality out of place, you know what to do with fear. So I really encourage every woman to step up and take back this power that was taken from us. Regardless of your profession, you can hold space for your community. You can open the doors of your home. Nana Protocol give you the music, the set, that setting so you can host. And then using progressive dosing of whatever compound you choose to serve, people can explore slowly, slowly in their own time and then you can hold that space. So there's always time to keep on adding there is no way to then take it back so what I would say is like always if you can sit with a woman if you are a woman trust that you have a companion software that comes with the womb that's why we carry babies right and so these experiences are the closest to dying and being born nice. so naturally yeah the space that we hold I've tested over and over again everything I touch myself empowered by ayahuasca, any woman can teach themselves, yeah? And so if you see now, there is also more increasing number of women stepping up and doing extraordinary work. And of course, men as well. But the kind of nine out of 10 men don't get it mm -hmm. that quick. And nine out of 10 women get it right away. So I think that these two things are important to have in mind, to have a female... Uh, power leading the space and also to go in progressive dosing only as you feel comfortable no need to scare the ego yeah. in a roller coaster yeah but then i can't help comment on that because you know one of my heroes is stan groff is the mm. grandfather yes. of psychedelic psychotherapy and recently last year in a, in a, or two years ago in an interview with tim ferris he was actually saying that he really believed that 
you need to get to a certain dose for the breakthrough, for that moment where you can go behind your ego and you see the potential of change. Yeah. It, was, it was saying that 50 microgram of it is this, nothing, you should, people should go back to the 300 microgram to really have that shift that then would allow change. Right, but it's important to understand where the person is at because yeah. if you're administrating this to a person that has a chronic depression for a couple of decades, their whole life is upside down. You go and you give that person a hero breakthrough dose and you probably break them in a way that then you never bring them back. Yeah. So it, two things. So when you're giving a progressive dose, you also get to a hero dose, but you get there progressively. If that makes sense, it's like getting on a cold plunge. If you jump like a bomb, you're going to get out right away. But if you put first your feet and you breathe, and then you get your knees and you breathe, and then slowly, slowly you go in, you will stay way longer and not freaking out. This is kind of the same. So it's important first to assess where the person is at. Based on that, what is their time in order to get to that breakthrough Everest, let's say. So if you never climb a mountain, you are not going to go barefoot yeah. to climb the Everest on the first time. Yeah. That would be a hero dose of 5-MeO right away. Yeah. And to understand that also it can shatter someone's life because... Most of the things that we believe about life, when you have these experiences, you have to recapitulate, you have to re-understand, yeah? And so it's important also to understand that the ego can fight back, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just lost power and doesn't know how to incorporate this understanding. So it's extremely important to understand that not everyone can conduct a hero dose and that actually most people don't. 40 to 66% of rewiring negatively, that's a huge number. Yeah. yeah. And then when you are there in that condition that you are left, the, it's very complex to bring you back. It's actually the progressive microdose of the same compound that hurts you that will bring you back. But there is not even like, unless... The only reason we know this is because that was kind of, I was catching all the overdoses of five and bringing them back in an exploratory way. But this is all things that the overground has no tools. That makes sense? Or Absolutely. knowledge as in today. So Absolutely. what I would say is always slowly, slowly. There slowly, is, slowly. There is time. And, and you will get to that hero dose when you feel you're ready. You would know, you know, trust your belly. Thank you very much. We'll, I'll reach out to you in a year from now and we have another chat on the status of the psychedelic uh, legalization. Thank <laughs> you, Flor. It. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Coca, sunara, sunara, yente. Coca, sunara, sunara, yente. Coca, sunara, sunara, yente. Coca, sunara, sunara, yente. Coca, sonara y sonara y en ti. Coca, sonara y sonara y en ti.